Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Muhammad Moinul Islam Khan. I am from Islamic University of Technology. In this video, I will demonstrate a simulation project named Automatic Power Factor Improvement System using Arduino. This is a simulation based project which has been developed in Protea simulation software using the Arduino module. Here we have developed a system which measures the power factor of an AC system and displays it on an LCD. Then the system automatically tries to improve the power factor when its value is less than a threshold value which we have selected to be 0.95. The improvement continues until the power factor is above the threshold value of 0.95. To correct the power factor, a capacitor blank consisting of 4 capacitors is used here. The system uses 15 different combinations of capacitance values which we have achieved using 4 different capacitors. The system also shows a no load connected when there is no load connected to the system. This project was developed back in 2019 by me, my cousin Rejaul and my friend Fariha, Sabbir, Jubair, Sanjida, Mohibul, Sabiha and Audrey. Before showing the simulation of the project, let me give you an idea of what a power factor is and how it can be improved and how our system does that. The power factor of an AC electrical system is defined as the ratio of the real power absorbed by the load to the apparent power flowing in the circuit. Here real power means the actual power consumed by the equipment to do useful work and the apparent power is the product of the RMS voltage and RMS current. On the other hand, the reactive power is the resultant power of an AC circuit when the current waveform is out of phase with the waveform of the voltage. When there are inductive loads in the system, the current lags the voltage. The power factor can also be defined as the cosine of the phase difference between the current and the voltage. Now, if the phase difference between voltage and current is theta, then the power factor can be written as cos theta. The phase difference theta has a connection with the time difference and it can be written as theta equals to 360 into f into delta t where f is the frequency and delta t is the time delay between the voltage and the current waveform. The delta t can be realized from the figure below. Here the red waveform shows the voltage and the green waveform is the current and delta t is the time difference between them. So if we can find the delta t then we can easily find the power factor. Now the question is how to find delta t. Let us now see the voltage and current waveforms separately. Then what we do is feed these two waveforms into two different op-amps. These op-amps are working in the comparator mode and they convert these sinusoidal waveforms into square waveforms as shown in the figure. Note that current and voltages are fed into the op-amp via current transformer and potential transformer respectively. Another thing is this op-amp setup is known as the zero detection circuit since it potentially helps to find out the zero crossings of the input signal. Now we pass these two square waveforms through an XOR gate and we get a single square wave output. The output gives a positive 5 voltage for the time duration when either current or voltage is zero and the other one has some value. This time duration is nothing but the delta t that we were looking for. Hence we feed this XOR gate output into a pin of the Arduino. The Arduino then measures for us the time duration for which this square wave gives a positive 5 voltage that is the delta t. Using this delta t value, theta is calculated and then the power factor is evaluated consequently. Now comes the most important part, how to improve this power factor. In most cases, the power factor is below unity due to the existence of inductive load on the system. Therefore, the power factor can be improved by introducing capacitances in the system. As mentioned earlier, we have used a capacitor bank consisting of 4 capacitors and these capacitors are connected in parallel with the circuit. These capacitors can be connected or disconnected from the system with the help of a relay transistor mechanism and this relay mechanism is controlled by the D1 to D4 pins of the Arduino. When a positive 5 voltage is provided in an Arduino pin, the transistor connected with that pin energizes the relay which in turn connects the corresponding capacitor with the circuit. The corresponding capacitor gets disconnected when an Arduino pin has zero voltage in it. The used 4 capacitors have values of 10, 20, 40 and 80 microfarad. Using these 4 capacitors, 15 different capacitor values can be achieved. This table shows those combinations and what voltage is to be given to the pins D1 to D4 to achieve a specific capacitance. As you can see that we have capacitance values between 10 microfarad to 150 microfarad with a step size of 10 microfarad. Now the Arduino keeps monitoring the power factor and whenever its value falls below 0.95 the Arduino activates combination 1 of the capacitor bank. Then it checks the power factor again. If the value is still below 0.95 it goes for combination 2. The Arduino keeps increasing the capacitance value by changing the combination until the power factor has risen above 0.95. In this way, our system continuously checks the power factor and corrects it whenever necessary. Now let's move on to the Proteus to see the simulation of this project. So here we have the automatic power factor improvement system. This is the Arduino module. This is the LCD and these are the loads that will be connected to the system. 
Here we have used inductors of different values to be used as the inductive loads. We have also connected lamps with each of the loads so that we can understand which load is connected and which is not. Each load can be connected or disconnected with the help of the switches attached to them. If this is the capacitor bank and these are the relay transistor mechanism that we are talking about earlier. Here we can see that this relay transistor mechanism are connected to the D1 to D4 pins of the Arduino. This one is our source and these are the two zero detection circuits and this is the ZOR gate that we are talking about earlier. Now we will load the code into the Arduino. To do so, we double click on the Arduino module. Then in the program file section, we select the browse button. Then we select our code, press open, and then click OK. Now we zoom into the LCD and load portion to have a better view of the simulation. Now we start the simulation by clicking on this blue triangle button here. As we can see, the simulation has started. The LCD will take a moment to turn on and show anything on it. Since we have not connected any load in the system, it is showing that no load is connected. Now we include a register in the system. Since the current and voltage are always in phase in case of resistive load, the power factor should be 1. Yes, it is showing power factor 1. The system is also showing us the angle between the voltage and current. Also, since the power factor is above 0 0.95, the system is showing that correction done, which means no power factor correction is needed at this moment. So no capacitor band combination is used. Now we connect a 20 milli Henry inductive load on the circuit. This should decrease the power factor and increase the magnitude of the angle. As we can see, the power factor has reduced to a value of 0 0.97 and the magnitude of the angle has increased. However, since the power factor is still above 0 0.95, no correction is done. Now we add some more inductors and see what happens. Now the power factor has fallen below 0 0.95, so the system starts the correction process with combination 1. For combination 4, the power factor goes above 0 0.95, so the system stops the correction process and shows the corrected power factor and the angle. Now we will keep increasing the loads one by one and test this system's ability to correct the power factor.
we have seen the system kept increasing the capacitor bank combination as we increase the inductive loads and each time it was able to bring the power factor above 0 0.95 and for all the cases the system was able to eject the change in load almost instantly thus we can say that this automatic power factor improvement system is efficient in terms of correcting power factor this project is already uploaded to my research gate profile and the link is given in the description below anyone interested in this project can request the files to research gate feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below for any query thank you for watching this video don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video helped you